So welcome to the uh, lecture video lecture for the subject uh, flexible AC transmission systems and uh, our topics in the first unit are the transmission line interconnection, uh, flow of power in an AC systems, uh, basic types of uh, fax controllers, brief uh, description and definitions of fax controllers and the benefits of fax. Okay, uh, once again, we'll recall the just uh, what do you mean by fax and uh, what do you mean by fax controller. So it is an alternating current transmission systems incorporating the power electronic based and other static controllers to enhance controllability and increase the power transfer capability. So this is one of the transmission techniques as we are well on that why we are uh, uh, focusing on the transmission techniques. Okay, because uh, uh, there is more power demand. Okay, so simply we can for the, the main object objective of uh, choosing a transmission techniques or why there is an upgrade of a transmission techniques means uh, in order to meet the power demand and as well as to avoid the excess power generation. So, and uh, somehow of the, uh, why we need transmission techniques and all we have discussed, uh, we'll be discussing further. And uh, this is the symbol of a basic fax controllers in that uh, rectangular box, you can see a switch controllable switch, mostly it is an uh, ICR there. Okay. So this is the general symbol of the fax uh, controller. Next, uh, let's look into the statement, a power electronic based system and other static equipment, equipment that provide control of one or more AC transmission system parameters because with the existing interconnection of the AC system. Okay, so already existing AC system were interconnected. Okay, so it will be more than one or uh, uh, I mean a different uh, integration of the sources. Okay, so integration of the sources in the sense it may be a renewable, it may be a tidal or it may be a grid power. Uh, different interconnections will be there. So in order to meet the maximum power demand and also in order to meet the controllability because uh, controlling a single area system means it's not already it is existing and uh, enough power generation is uh, going on. Okay, I mean enough power transmission is going on. But uh, with this uh, flexible AC transmission system, we are going to interconnect the different AC systems. I hope you know what is the fundamental thing to connect the AC system. That is, we have to maintain a constant voltage and constant frequency. Okay, so in order to interconnect two ACs, we have to focus on voltage and we have to focus on frequency. These two should be constant and we have to go for parallel connection and we can uh, generate the power for a uh, different areas. Okay. Next, uh, we have seen some of the why we need transmission interconnections there. Uh, in the last session we have discussed. Next, uh, another is flow of power in an AC system. So, so how we can uh, uh, transmit the power and what are the techniques available with us and all we will have a glance on it. So this is the normal uh, consider the figure A here. It is a uh, two sources are available here. So these are the generating sources. Okay, so and these two lines are connected to the same generating sources here and these uh, two sources having respective loads on it. Okay, suppose if the first line. Okay, so dotted here represents it is traveling for uh, some long distance. Okay, so uh, also we have discussed this uh, HVDC part and that time also we have discussed why we prefer uh, HVAC, I mean uh, fax technique instead of HVDC or why is HVDC is preferred in, uh, when compared with the fax, all these things we have discussed in the previous session. Okay, so in simple uh, single line we can uh, conclude that and uh, based upon the break even distance, that is if the distance is around 500 kilometers to 800 kilometers, uh, then we can prefer the HVDC or else we have to depend on the AC transmission systems. Okay, so like uh, HVAC, EHVAC, uh, UHVAC, likewise. Okay, next time, uh, whereas coming to DC, uh, there is a DC, HVDC, uh, MTDC, likewise, multi-terminal DC links. Okay, so look at the figure A here. If suppose the total line impedance is X, okay, if suppose the total line impedance is X, and the power transferred in that particular line is around two third of it. Okay, so two third in the sense, what about the remaining? There will be obviously losses because of the line reactance. Okay, so you might, you, you may raise a question that sir, what about the resistance? So you are saying that impedance. So what is the uh, impedance value? It's a combination of resistance and reactance. That is R plus JX. But uh, what about the resistance means? We have to consider as internal resistance. Okay, so in uh, long transmission lines and resistance is negligible. Okay, so you'll be learning this thing in the EPTS. Okay, so in long transmission lines, uh, resistance is negligible. 
and uh, moreover in uh, short transmission lines we are going to neglect the capacitance okay so uh, definitely there will be resistance but we have to treat it as internal resistance which will be very uh, low value okay Neg negligible value so that is the reason why in total fax or in total hvac transmission we are focusing only the, on the reactance part that is if we consider an impedance so totally we are uh, concentrating on the reactance either inductive reactance or capacitive reactance or uh, equivalent reactance which is a combination of uh, both xl or xc okay so okay so let's come into uh, in detail of this uh, figure a here if suppose the another line is having 2x okay so if the impedance is high when compared with the first line obviously the power transfer is one third so earlier it is in the first uh, line it is two third but in the other line it is one third that means what we are uh, uh, observing here means if the increase in the loading okay so if the line is having more reactants what happens the losses will be getting increased so in that moment what is the alternative measures or how can we overcome this issue how can we reduce the losses and we can increase the capacity okay so the, the another method available with us is the hvdc okay so look at the figure b here suppose for the same same line first line so already it is transmitting the power suppose if uh, in other line so uh, we have preferred an hvdc so what is hvdc high voltage dc transmission means this is uh, already existing ac with the help of the converter station one which is acting as a rectifier there it is converting the ac to dc and it is travel for a long long distance and after that this dc is converted to ac so what is the purpose of uh, why we prefer hvdc in that uh, issue means uh, if we are able to transmit for a long distance then we can uh, go for an hvdc so in this how we can uh, send the power as desired as desired in the sense we can uh, control the power okay so whereas in the transmission line uh, look at the figure a here we cannot control anything here okay so only based upon the impedance obviously the power is going to be delivered i mean uh, it depends upon the losses okay so if the losses are more obviously the real power transfer will be getting reduced and the vice versa likewise but if we prefer the hvdc line either at the rectifier station one or either at the rectifier station two by with the help of these converters we are able to uh, control the power i hope you be you will be knowing the uh, rectifier operation right ac to dc so by using the firing angle how can we control the power okay so in the inverter again dc is dc to ac there we can control the power by applying the pwm techniques likewise okay so this is the one of the methods we can prefer and coming to the figure c here uh, figure c here you can uh, notice uh, there is a variable impedance part so variable impedance in the sense sorry So variable impedance in the sense uh, uh, here you can see a capacitor variable capacitor connected in series with the line okay so with this method also we can uh, control the power or we can send the power as desired okay so by adjusting the impedance value okay so let us consider if the total re line reactance is xl if we connect a series capacitor then what is the equivalent reactance xl minus xc so from that what we can uh, say that the total reactance is going to be controlled so simply in, sing in single point we can say that if i control the reactance so you look at the figure a here it is uncontrolled case here by using a series capacitor which is of uh, variable i can control the power okay if reactance is varied obviously the power flow will also be varied so this is another method uh, in order to get the power flow as desired okay next look at the uh, figure d here so this is the uh, by controlling the phase angle okay so uh, uh, this is also a important thing here so by how can we control the phase angle means uh, uh, different uh, methods i mean uh, power factor correction methods are there and uh, by using uh, capacitive banks okay so uh, some of the compensating techniques can be applied and we can control the phase angle so if we improve the phase angle means i mean uh, if we control the angle between the voltage and current okay so if uh, phi is improved means what happens obviously the real power, power flow can also be improved so this is an another method so this is uh, the concept of uh, power flow in parallel paths okay so let's uh, get into the power flow in a measured systems 
So I uh, can uh, request you to uh, uh, see the all the figures carefully here. So each and uh, look at the figure A. So just I will uh, read out uh, what is uh, presenting in this figure A. Okay. So this is a measured system. So measured in the sense uh, here uh, of a loop connection or a uh, closer connections here. So here figure uh, sorry in the figure A. So A, B, C. So three points we can see here, three interconnection points. And uh, at uh, point A, so 2000 megawatts generating plant is there. Okay, so listen carefully. At point B, so 1000 megawatt plant is there. Okay, so these two are the generating sources. And I have interconnected with the help of transmission lines connected between A and C, A and B. Okay, and uh, B and C. Okay, so uh, these two plants are able to uh, survey a load of 3000 megawatts. So two generating sources, 2000 megawatts, 1000 megawatts. It is serving a load of 3000 megawatts. Okay, fine. So that is the uh, maximum load here. And uh, what about the, uh, this feed is? So between A and C, what is the transmitting power? It is around 400, four, sorry, 1400 megawatts. And it has some resistance 10 ohms. Uh, a, B has a, a resistance of 10 ohms and uh, B, C has a resistance of 10, uh, 5 ohms. So actually it is an impedance value. Okay, so don't get uh, get into that it is an resistance. So it is nothing but an impedance. Okay, so a small correction that is, uh, this is the impedance value. So impedance of A, C line is 10 ohms. Impedance of uh, A, B line is 10 ohms. And impedance of B, C line is 5 ohms. And it is common in all the figures, figure B, figure C and figure D. Okay, so right. So uh, what is the uh, uh, what is the thing we have observed here from figure A? So 2000 megawatt uh, generating plant at point A and 1000 megawatt uh, uh, power generating plant at point D and uh, 3000 megawatt load is connected at point C. Okay, fine. Then what about the line impedances? So it is around 10 ohms, 10 ohms and five ohms respectively. That is AC. A, B, and B, C. So A, C line 10 ohms, A, B line 10 ohms, and B, C line 5 ohms. And this impedance will never changes, okay, in all the figures. But uh, this uh, individual line power transfer is getting changed. Okay, let's uh, see further. So initially, the power transfer at A, C is 1400. At B, C is 1600. At uh, A, B is 600, okay. So these are the actual generating power, okay? And uh, uh, just have an uh, observation here. So AB is 1000. See, suppose these lines has a rating of 1000 megawatts. That is AB is 1000. So look at the figure here. AB is 1000. AB is 1000. Actual rating is 1000. But actually what is the power transfer here? 600 megawatts. So suppose the rating is 1000 and actually it is delivering 600 means it is no issue. Okay, it is under our uh, permissible range. Okay, next, uh, another one is line BC of 1250 megawatts. Line BC, B and C, 1250 is the actual rate range, but what is the power delivered? 1600 megawatts. So that means it is exceeding the rating and it should not be for a long period of time. Okay. And what about the next one? Uh, line AC is 2000. Between A and C, it is 2000 rating, but actually the power transfer is 1400 megawatts. Okay, so this line AC and AB has no issue because for a, uh, for a line AB, actually 1000 megawatts, but it is transferring uh, 600. So no problem. But uh, um, coming to AC, it is actually 2000 megawatts, but actually it is uh, transferring 1400. So it is also under uh, our range. But whereas coming to line BC, it is actually on the maximum rating is 1250, but it is uh, transmitting 1600 megawatts. See, this is the situation and we need to uh, solve this is, uh, situation. So next, so uh, we have to focus that this 1250 megawatt range is exceeding, okay? 
so this there is you can you may expect a question that uh, sir if the rating itself is 1250 megawatts how can we transmit uh, 1600 megawatts so this there is this is the, uh, there is a possibility that uh, for a short period of time we can transmit we can exceed the power because uh, the transmission line can bear the uh, can bear the um, for a short period of time it can bear the situation okay so that is the case so now I look at figure b here okay so again i am not reading out all those values see here uh, look at figure b so sorry figure b and the line bc look at figure b and line bc okay so here earlier it is 1600 megawatts now we have been reduced it to 1250 so that is the maximum range and what about the remaining power so we have balanced at a b and a c so c once again so earlier it is 1600 megawatts and it is exceeding our range and we have to focus on that particular transmission line bc so we have reduced it to 1250 megawatts and we have compensated it uh, line ac which is earlier 1400 now it is 350 uh, sorry uh, 1750 so now uh, earlier ab is 16, uh, 600 now it has been reduced to 250 so like this we are uh, able to balance the load by using a series capacitor so you look at the uh, ac line earlier there is no reactor connected sorry no capacitor connected now there is a, a small uh, reactor is connected okay yes a small uh, input we have added some impedance so m out uh, so minus indication and because of a uh, capacitor okay so I, I, uh, we are overall we are controlling the reactants in the line so that we are balancing the situation. So this is one possibility. Oh, look at the figure C here. Okay. So in, for this, uh, by taking the reference as uh, figure A. So what we have done, we have connected a reactor. So uh, before uh, explaining this, I would like to highlight uh, uh, or I would like to make a note of it that uh, in entire fact subject, uh, I will call the inductor as a reactor. Okay, so inductor in the sense it is nothing but a reactor, but whereas capacitor I will term it as capacitor. Okay, so enter in facts technology, the reactor is termed as an inductor. Okay, so reactor in the sense inductor. Okay, let's uh, get into the concept. So figure C here, look at figure C. So a series connected reactor, which is of variable. Okay, so here again 1250 megawatts and uh, line AB is 250 megawatts and line AC is 1750. So this is an another possibility. So by using a series a reactor. In figure B, we have connected a series capacitor. So capacitor is connected in line AC. And in figure C, a reactor, that is inductor is connected between BC. Okay, so there also we are controlling the reactants. And coming to figure D, the last figure, figure D, by adjusting the phase angle in a line AC. Again, we have brought into 1250, 250 and 1750. So this is the possibility of adjusting the load in each line so that we will have an continuous power supply and we'll have a reliable operation. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, I mean, a power flow in a mesh network or meshed systems. Okay, so by using an uh, series capacitor or by using a series reactor or by adjusting the phase angle okay so here nowhere uh, fax controller is nothing is discussed here it, these are all the traditional methods okay already existing methods i'm uh, just uh, discussing okay so this is these are the fundamental things okay so if one of the line is getting exceeded if one of the line is is overloaded so how can we balance the line so these are the three possibilities. So this is about the power flow in a measured systems.